Uh, we have a quorum now, so I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. It's now 6.30. This meeting of the Great Barrington Affordable Housing Trust Fund for April 16th, 2024 is conducted via Zoom. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 2012 order, suspending uh, certain provisions of the open meeting law and Governor Healy's March 2023 revised order extending remote participation by all members in a meeting of a public body, this meeting of the Great Barrington Affordable Housing Trust will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the meeting may do so, uh, see the instructions at the top of the agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological terms. Um, Mr. Method has joined us. Uh, members currently attending uh, uh, via Zoom are Bill Cook, Christina Curzia, Garfield Reed, Joseph Method, and myself, Frederick Clark. Um, we do have a quorum. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I did send out meeting minutes. Uh, they were a little tardy, shall we say. They, I only got them this morning. I don't know if people have had a chance to look at them or not. Um, yeah. uh, can we go ahead and review or, or vote on the minutes for March 19th? Does anybody need to? Well, I could make a motion. I'll move that we uh, approve the minutes of March 19th, 2024. Second. Uh, Okay, uh, does anyone have any corrections or comments on the mini on the minutes? Hearing none, this will be a roll call vote. Um, Bill Cook? Yes. Garfield Reed? Yes. Joseph Method? Yes. Christina Curcia? Yes. Um, Ananda Timpain? Yes. And Frederick Clark, yes. Uh, minutes, thank you very, everybody. For that, um, I'm just switching gears here. Um, Christina is not feeling well, so maybe may want to leave a little early. So we're going to maybe uh, move things up a little bit. As you may know, we've had an open slot for a member since John Katz retired uh, last June or July, last July 1st. Uh, we do have an application. Uh, Peter Most, I'm going to, Peter, I'm going to promote you to panelist so that you can talk. And um, Peter has, uh, he's maybe familiar with you from his columns in the Berkshire Edge, where he's uh, a commentator on many, many things. Uh, I've gotten to know him a little bit in the last few months, and uh, he's a very sincere and, and, and interesting man. Um, our procedure, just to recap, is we request that anyone interested in joining uh, when we have an opening, submit a letter of interest to the town manager who forwards it to our committee, and we ask that person to attend uh, at least one meeting, and then we can recommend it. The actual appointment is done by the select board. Uh, so um, I'm going back and forth on a billion screens. Thank you, Peter, for, for coming forward. Do you want to uh, spend a couple minutes I, just telling us uh, who you are and why you're interested in the Affordable Housing Trust? Uh, yes, and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I've lived in Great Barrington for about five and a half years. Uh, during my time here, I've, I've come to note uh, increasingly that housing is the 
uh, most significant issue facing our community. Uh, quality of life is severely impaired when folks are unable to be properly housed. I know that's not news to this committee. Um, housing st stress affects everyone in a family. Um, I've also noticed businesses are severely impacted by a lack of housing. Uh, what I think is new is hearing increasingly that successful businesses um, have had to close because they cannot find workers, because those workers cannot find housing. Um, I'm aware, I'm not suggesting Fairview Hospital is closing, but I'm aware Fairview Hospital has talked about its challenges in, in finding workers because of unaffordable housing. I'm aware that the uh, Berkshire Hills Regional School District has talked about its challenges in hiring staff because of challenges in housing. Um, I heard a rumor today, which is just a rumor at this point, that a successful, well-known business in Great Barrington has decided to close because the owner is tired of the struggle and finding enough workers to run its business. So we need housing for housing's sake. We need housing for our businesses to thrive. We need housing for our community to thrive. And um, over the last few years, I've become increasingly interested in housing and potential housing solutions. Uh, I would like to be able to contribute to efforts to enhance housing opportunities. Uh, I recognize that the Affordable Housing Trust Fund cannot by itself solve Great Barrington's housing deficit, but I do see that it can play a significant role in meeting housing needs. I was most impressed with Mr. Cook's uh, suggestion recently concerning uh, cottages and the ADU proposal, and I looked into that and and really appreciated uh, from that moment what the housing trust fund can do. Um, I have I've been working recently with Representative Pignatelli on an amendment to a to the housing bill. I have written about housing for the Berkshire Edge uh, frequently. And I, um, I, I would like to join the effort. That's why I've applied. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments from Mr. Most? So uh, this happens so rarely that we 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 add members that uh, we're not. I'm not that familiar with it, but uh, I, if anybody is interested in uh, saying anything or not, can we go ahead and recommend that the select board uh, appoint uh, Peter Most to uh, the vacant slot that we have? Keeping in mind, nobody else, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I, I, I want to, uh, I, I'm Based on what Peter's written, I'm I'm pretty favorable. I just wanted to put him on the hot seat a little bit uh, and say um, or ask, uh, what do you think the um, what do you think the uh, the main cause of housing unaffordability is? If you, if you had to choose one, I. I'm not sure that I, I, I'd like to answer your question. I, I think it is um, more multifaceted than one single issue. Um, housing cost construction, housing construction costs uh, have been tremendous. I've, I've spoken to developers. Uh, I met with construct folks last week, uh, Jane and June, and we talked about the challenges that they have in receiving the grants. Uh, there have been... Um, I, I am not pointing fingers. I believe our community is enhanced by second homeowners. But uh, if you read my columns, you know that I've been interested in the fact that uh, the second homeowner population has increased, it appears, the cost of housing in our community, which has uh, not been reflected in the area median income, which is often used by the state. In fact, the um, the the, what I've been working with uh, Representative Picantelli on is getting a, a an adjustment to that uh, in the bond bill for both seasonal communities and other communities because the the state's assistance related to housing 
is generally tied to AMI, which isn't, which is not reflected in the second homeowner's inflation issue. Um, I could go on, but th those are the top issues. But I wouldn't say there's any one thing, and that's sort of the issue. If there's one thing, you could focus on it, but it's really a multifaceted problem. Yeah, I was kind of going for like the the magic wand question. Like if you had a, <laughs> if you had a magic wand and you could change one if thing. I, if I had a magic wand, I would um I would drop a billion dollars from the sky and give it to Great Barrington, but I suppose that you don't want to glib <laughs> answer like that. Um if I if I had a if I had a magic wand, I be, I think that it would be to adjust AMI so that all of the state programs that exist could actually be applicable applicable to our community. Um, and because you, you can't build housing currently without any state assistance. Uh, I, I actually work with a group that has tried to do on a private basis some um, housing, workforce housing, and it doesn't pencil. So I, uh, my current bugaboo is uh, AMI. Peter, I have a, a follow-up question. I noticed in your application that you did talk about working with a group of uh, folks doing housing. And I just wanted to ask if there's any any possible conflict between yeah. the work of the Affordable Housing Trust uh, and, and you know, are you, do you have divided loyalties, I guess, is, is the other part? No. So um, uh, about a year ago, I started working with the group that uh, privately has been trying to uh, build workforce housing. Um, we made offers on a couple of properties, we, uh, which uh, we had disagreements with the sellers of those properties. They think they're more valuable than they are worth. So we, we haven't actually succeeded. But no, th th this is a, uh, we, we are not, um, we're not not for profit. We just don't wanna lose money. We're trying to be able to build housing and we haven't been able to do it, but it it's there's a the, there's a complete disconnect between those efforts and what you're doing in affordable housing in helping um, in seeking in, in providing funds that are state funded. These these were private efforts. If there ever was a moment where I felt as were required, but if if there was a in any way a conflict, I would of course note it and not participate. Well, as you may know, there there may not be such a divide as you're 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 saying. Uh, we have over the past six months to a year spent some time talking about privately funded, uh, even uh, social justice uh, investment funds, things like that, of working with with those kinds of, of sources of income. You know, hopefully you could perhaps advise us or help us to see if that's a possible direction of whether it would, you know, have some merit. I, I, I'd be, I'd love to participate in that, but I, as for a conflict, I don't perceive one. If that's your, I'm not sure the, if your question is asking, do I perceive a conflict in those efforts or not? I, uh, well, I just wanted to get it on the record that we, we what 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 sort of work you're doing, and okay. to let so, you know that uh, it isn't so polar yeah. as, as it as it seems that we may be going in that direction. Hopefully, uh, as well, we see our charge as as very broad, not simply providing government funding for housing but to use education, to use uh, facilitation, to serve as a catalyst, if, if, if possible, for, for many other programs. So, Ananda, you look like you had a question. Well, no, I was just gonna clarify that the only direct conflict would be covered by the law, and it would relate to the, current, the RFP and fund. Um, and so it would just mean that, like any of us, you wouldn't be able to apply to any of the programs. No, of course. Including our current RFP for develop that can be used by private developers. Right. So, and I, um, I, did, I didn't, I say that more because it seemed that there was some confusion about where conflict might arise and that that would be helpful for anybody listening to understand this is where it could be. 
I, I appreciate that. Um, my group has been wholly unsuccessful in uh, in actually being able to develop anything, but we dare to dream. Um, but if there was a moment, we, we would not apply for something, uh, and I certainly wouldn't vote for something that would in, enable my group to proceed. Uh, but we, we keep trying. It turns out, and, and in fact, the reason, and I don't mean to consume too much time here, but it turns out some of the reasons I've been interested in housing is that it, it, I, I now realize during this effort how very difficult it is for for everyone uh, to develop in Great Barrington for a variety of reasons and elsewhere in South, Southern Berkshire County. So I've, I've been I've been trying to assist this process, and it is very difficult. And you see that you see that that uh, developing as the crux of the solution, as it were. Well, no, but um, uh, th there are obviously many potential solutions. Uh, there are more people chasing too few houses at the moment. So one possible solution, a solution, and why I'm working with Representative Pignatelli is to try to get uh, housing built. And currently, given housing cost construction, it's, it's not happening. Um, more units, more availability yeah, per, is one the resolution. Per, the perfect cost of construction is higher than it's ever been, and it's not coming down. Right. And, I have a question. And I'm, I'm told Berkshire County is as expensive to build as um, in the Boston region, surprisingly. Christina, you had a, a brief, brief question. Yeah, I would like to find out what's your idea of uh, workforce housing? What form of the workforce, workforce housing you guys were discussing and how it uh, was supposed to look? Is so, it? Because I, we've seen um, some other ideas. Present. When I use the, when I use the term workforce housing, there, there there tends to be, as as far as I can tell, a lack of vocabulary as to exactly what that means. Um, also, my group sometimes refers to it as the missing middle. There is a uh, HUD produces um, you know a nice chart that describes eighty percent AMI and one hundred percent AMI, and we understand where one hundred twenty percent of AMI is, and there are many individuals who are unable to afford housing in the Southern Berkshires that earn too much based on the HUD scales, but not enough to afford housing. And I refer to that as, as workforce housing. Uh, somebody I was talking with recently has a son who is a sheriff, not a sheriff, in the police department in um, Sheffield and uh, makes too much to get any government assistance but can't afford housing. That that's what when I say workforce housing, these are individuals, police officers, nurses, teachers, uh, everyone that we rely on in the community that is paid well, but not enough to be able to afford housing. Well, okay, thank you, Peter. I'm, I'm going um, to I can clarify this. You mean normal housing uh, that people can actually settle and live in, not small rooms with one bathroom or <laughs> kitchen like some people were proposing here? Um, well, uh, my, my group that is trying to uh, enhance workforce housing has among, has among other things considered, uh, has made an offer to purchase a bed and breakfast that would cost more than regular 100% AMI uh, so, so I, I don't discount the don't discount workforce housing can be like a thornwood opportunity, but but I don't only mean that it it, it can mean many things. I think we can get into right. some of those details right. about housing, right. you know, over over time. But um, I think, Greg, yes, Garfield, I'd like to speak. You didn't give me a chance to speak. I'm sorry. Please do. Yes. Um, I'm just going to be quite frank. I have a little issue with Mr. Most and some of the articles he's written and what he does for the edge. And, and until I guess I feel a little better about it or straightened out, I either have to abstain, which I may do since I am on the select board, or I feel better, but I, ha I have, I'm a little uncomfortable. That's um, what I need to state. 
Miss Mr. Reed, would it be possible for us to talk that through, if not now, over coffee sometime? That's possible. Well, I have some concerns as well, but, you know, I, I don't think that they're relevant to this discussion, so. And um, I guess I'll note that uh, I write opinions for The Edge, and I often hear folks disagree with me. Um, they're just my opinions. It, but please know that uh, opinions, but, Sometimes but, they... There are uh, well, never mind. It's not no, time. The, to point, the point I was going to the point I was going to make was um, I have opinions on many things as reflected in the edge, but my uh, sincere belief that I'd like to assist this committee in its housing efforts are um, are distinct from various opinions on other subjects. I, I think um, I, I'm I'm impressed. I, I think. Uh, you're high, sincere, and I think you've done a lot of work on on the, on the issue, and I think you'd be a great asset to us. I guess uh, we should vote on this. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion to recommend uh, Peter Most to the select board to fill the vacancy on the Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, uh, Bill is doing it, but you're, but you're muted. Uh, I'll, uh, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, go ahead. You just did. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. Uh, I, I, I would like to make the motion to recommend Peter Most to the... Okay. And, then... and second, please. Bill, I, we just can't hear you. I think that's Bill nodding. Yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah. Sorry, I've been yeah, yeah. muted the whole time. Uh, I'll second. Okay. Because we are remote, we need to do this as a uh, roll call. So uh, starting at the top of my screen, it's Bill Cook, please. The motion yeah. is to recommend P Peter Most. Yes. Garfield Reed. I'm abstaining. Abstain. Joseph Method. Uh, yes. Christina. Abstain. Abstain, two abstentions. Uh, Ananda. Abstain. Three abstentions, and I will vote yes. Okay. So um, the motion carries. Uh, is my understanding of Robert's rules? Uh, hold on, that, hold on. May I ask? You probably know better than I, but is that three, three? Is rule three carry the motion? Uh, uh, three there's three a majority three. of people voting. Majority of people voting. Yeah. Of a majority of people voting, abstentions are counted in the majority. After the uh, others are counted, if you want to vote, not vote on the issue, you have to vote present instead of abstain. Uh, in present. I, I don't know. I'll change to present. Okay. There were three positive votes. There were no negative votes. There were three abstentions. Yeah. The motion carries. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. We the process is uh, we will send a recommendation to the town manager, who will put it on the agenda for the select board. I do not believe you have to attend the that select board meeting. Uh, after that, you need to go to town hall and be personally sworn in. Um, in the select board's office, uh, or no, the town clerk's office, I believe, um, and basically saying you accept the the appointment, et cetera, et cetera. There's also some um, ethics and I'm, open I'm meeting. On the, I'm, on the, I'm on the ZBA at the moment. So I, I've okay, done. so you're familiar with that. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody. Can we move on to the next agenda item? Yes. Um, Can we bring this up for discussion at the end of the meeting, please? I would like to have a little discussion about this at the end of the meeting or close when there's, if I have a time, I'd like to discuss. Garfield, why don't we just do it now? What do you want to talk about? Well, I just want to talk about, I guess, if you have three abstentions, then you have some people with some doubt, and that's almost half the board. So I have a problem with maybe half of the board having an issue. So that's kind of, that's... That's that makes it not and then you vote no. Then you vote no, or you that's vote for a no vote. Yeah. 
It's right, but you can do that or present. So I, you said I should change. So I changed to present. Okay, folks. Present is recorded. I'm, as I'm not just a giving you my opinion that we can just take it like that. But um, that's how I feel. And um, yeah. Okay, that's all. And as you said, you'll have another chance when it comes before the select board. We're simply re recommending that Mr. Most be appointed by the select board. I point out to you that we've had this opening for a year without, you know, and I think his credentials are uh, outstanding. Um, I'm sure, knowing the man as I do, that he will be a good committee member and uh, be willing to compromise and listen to all sorts of different sides of issues. So. Garfield, do you that's have any opinion. more comments? I have, that's your opinion. It is my opinion. Correct. And I offered mine, and so we'll leave it that and move on. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, item. Um, we have... A, I would like to use my um, prerogative to move an item up on the agenda, uh, and that is we have a, a, an application. For, uh, let's see, how do I do this? Maybe I could get some opinion here. Um, either we have we have an application for a down payment assistance. I was going to suggest bringing that up but perhaps we should go through the financial report first to make sure that we have uh, an understanding of the funds that we have uh, available at this time. Okay. Um, and on the agenda, the next item is uh, trust related activities, North Plain Road planning board approval, next steps. Um, there's really nothing new to um, report the uh, I believe we're still in the appeal period and in North Plain Road uh, is going to be uh, bid very shortly, put out on the street for uh, RFD bid. We then have on our agenda reports from right. this. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, in terms of the process with North Plain Road, do you know if we're still looking like we're on track for the Mass Works grant timeline for this year, or are we looking at moving some like work that we thought would happen in this year into the next fiscal year? We finished all of our approvals. There's a mandatory 20 day appeal period. We are, I believe in that appeal period and nearing the end of it with no uh, objections at this point to my knowledge. Once that appeal period is complete, we will be bidding the project uh, for construction to begin this spring. So the Mass Works grant will be um, accessed during 2024. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah. So it, we, we are not project like it for budgeting purposes, our fourth mm -hmm. quarter projections should be adjusted. Uh, well, we can talk about how we adjust. I mean, it's fine. It's not a problem. It's just a thing we will need to do. Yes. Um, Garfield, yes, can I ask uh, if you have anything that you would like to tell us about the joint Select Board Planning Committee. Have they? Well, we haven't met in a while, Fred. So I, okay. um, of course, I have nothing else to, re to re new to report. I have a little note here that says at some point uh, we would like the, the Affordable Housing Trust would like to get a summary of some of the housing related um, items. I don't certainly think we've been ahead. copied on the list of items. I mean, I believe you told us that there was a substantial list of suggestions, some of Correct. which we've heard, uh, some of which we haven't. But um, would it be possible for you to uh, obtain yes. that list and share it? Yes, absolutely. And if it's in shareable form. Stated that we're also 
kind of not sure if we're going to still continue uh, with the subcommittee. That was also something that's on the table. And we just haven't had a meeting just because of uh, the select board uh, being a little busy and leave. Yeah, well, the of. budget has been crazy too. So, yeah. and then town meeting and all that stuff. Yeah, so we haven't had a meeting in a bit, but I will get to those. Yeah, and um, while we're on the topic, uh, as you may know, um, town meeting is uh, May 5th, I believe, and uh, that will happen between now and the next uh, Affordable Housing Trust meeting. So please attend uh, the, there is a recommendation from the CPA to uh, award uh, some money to the Affordable Housing Trust. So if we could attend, my pitch is attend town meeting and vote for housing issues, um, mm -hmm. which sort of blends into the next issue. Ananda, would you care to talk about financial reporting? I can throw up on the screen the last budget that you shared with me, which is a March draft. Yeah. Don't think anything's changed since then. Let me go back to, well, crap, where's this? Uh, sorry, I gotta move around here on Zoom. And can everybody see that now mm -hmm. to make it larger? No, that's good. One, we don't want to hear you blow your nose while we are in a <laughs> close, tight environment that is disrespectful to other people. And I feel like you could go to the bathroom and blow your nose. Does anybody know where that audio is coming from? Where does that come from? I guess it's from my computer. All of a sudden, the video went down. Okay. We can still see you, Christina. <laughs> uh, Ananda, I am showing yep, uh, I the budget theme. Is this a size mm -hmm. that you can see? Yes, thank you. You want to tell us where we're at? Um, essentially, well, there's the only change to my knowledge since February is that we budget that uh, in February we allocated funds um, to to work with, to have somebody work on the um, report for CPC. Um, I understand that we approved up to 500, but I put that in as um, a projection of 300, which I think is closer to what we'll be looking at for the fourth quarter. Um, so can you just tell us, are we in the third quarter right now? The, the uh, March completed the third quarter. Okay, and so during so the third quarter, the twenty four thousand five hundred was uh, a down payment loan uh, application that we approved. That's correct. Okay. Um. So. So I yeah, I have a few comments. I think they're probably going to be ones that you've heard before, and I don't. I'm. Um, I, I believe that when we vote for something, we encumber those funds. Those funds are no longer available to be used for other programs. They are reserved and to be accessed. The so, ADU pilot program- I don't disagree with you, but I cannot put something as as an actual expense until it's reflected as encumbered on, on Chris's document. So if Chris is not encumbering funds until we until they're they are actually going to an entity outside of the trust, it is not encumbered because I can't reconcile his records to ours then. Uh, my problem is that when the I understand that you're using this to talk to the CPA about uh, where the funds go, uh, how we're spending our money, et cetera, because they were unable or unwilling to look at the previous financial reports 
which I'd been sending them, uh, or not, or they didn't get them. I don't know what happened, but we need this document for us so that we can uh, actively keep track of where the money is, how much is available, yes. so that if uh, an expense comes up, we need to know how much money is available. Yeah, simple as that. So, I guess I'm looking at the hundred and thirty. Thousand yes. eight hundred and forty six as yes. as available. what's available. Yes. And that's why like moving something from a one quarter to the next doesn't doesn't mean that we're not accounting for it. It just changed it's it's just where the expense is actually going to show up on the town provided balance sheet essentially for us. So that that this so that they reconcile. But yes, the 130 is what we should be looking at as available. Okay. Um, does anybody have any question? I mean, I, I still, you and I are always gonna disagree about the narrative, but um, I've had my say, so there's no point in re rehashing that. Um, mm -hmm. The one thirty, the one thirty is after the ADU money, right? That's correct. So that's like one thirty that we actually have to spend. So yeah. somebody's coming today to ask uh, for down payment assessment. We could out, we could encumber that today. Yes, and <laughs> essentially, what it would, what we'd be the the bucket we'd be spending it out of was our previous conversations had indicated that we were we were going to take the balance after the ADU and have that available for the affordable housing development grants. Um, so if you look in the yellow yellow column on the left of your screen, in the 277, 188, that's where we'd be taking the money from. And it has a balance. If you look all the way to the right in that line, unspent, we have the one have 127 in the white column in the budgeted to projected comparison. Um so um, I, I like yeah, I'm just explaining that. I'm not saying anything like I'm I personally have no problem with us doing that. Um I have a question about the ADU 155,000. Uh, could you remind me where, when we spent that money? I know that we gave some money to, to so, uh, well, people. Yeah. Um, so what we have done is we have voted uh, to move forward with that project. And we voted on the amount of money our, we are allocating for the total of that project. Okay. We haven't done anything with the money because we can't move forward until town council is finished with what with what they want to make the adjustments they want to make to the proposal and we and we can move forward with a contract with construct so it we're in limbo we have allocated the money but it has not there there are no applications yet and applications have not been awarded funds we have not moved the money to actual people and the applications are life and uh, ready to be filled up no, we can't do anything. We're just okay. stuck in limbo until okay. we can move forward with the contract and we can't move forward with the contract till we get the contract, till we get the um, language adjustments from the town council. Okay, thanks so much. And yeah. the, the, 130, um, the 130 does not include the like 20 whatever thousand that might, that might get approved at town meeting? That's right, because that would be for the next fiscal year. So this is this I, is not even a place. This is just through June thirtieth. If we have a balance on June thirtieth of unspent funds, it will roll into July one in the next fiscal year. I have a question. Go ahead. Go? Oh. Hello. Yes, yes, Garfield. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, as you know, I've missed a bunch of meetings, either being sick or with other commitments. But I'm sure I was not around when we did the ADU pilot. What can we do with just one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars? Um, we haven't done it yet. 
We yeah. got that yeah. one. Right, we, right, right. But that's not a do, lot of money. What we will do is we will fund we will fund pro, propo, proposed projects from Great Barrington residents to um that would enable them to have a rentable ADU on their property for somebody who is income eligible. Now, like we don't know, this is why we don't, there's a lot we don't know. This is why it's a pilot. So mm -hmm. we could get, we could get a bunch of $10,000 applications in theory to do minor modifications that make something a uh, rentable space. Um, but it's more likely that we'll get some we'll get some larger applications and we're committed to um we funding at least two so it will have to come out that way um oh, that's, that's nice yeah and it could this includes you know this what i'm just going to say for the public because there's been a lot of questions about this what qualifies as an adu in great barrington ranges from a tiny house through you know a completely separate structure a garage apartment or what would also be eligible under this program is if somebody was uh, somebody had an old duplex that they used as a single residential building but they wanted to return it to a duplex and they could that would also qualify oh, um okay. so remind um i know part of the reason for generating this was to communicate with uh, the CPA committee, which after all has been our principal funding source uh, for years. And I want to do a segue where uh, I believe I saw a commitment for you meeting with the uh, community preservation folks yeah. to uh, later this month to present yeah. this number is this is that correct yeah so um i will be pre i will be in person reporting um to the cpc on the 30th um and at the end of this week um the uh, the financial report will have a, a cpc specific summary of this even further um, and the narrative will go to the commissioner, to this, it's a commissioner committee, to the CPC folks um, for next week for review. So they will have had an opportunity to look at this, read through a narrative of our work from the year. Um, I will be, the key is um, we're being asked to keep things really um clear and legible and, and short and sweet. And we know that there are some pretty detailed questions that individual members have when we've talked to them in the past. So the uh, report, the written narrative report of what we've worked on this year, um, the goal is to keep that pretty short and sweet and clear, but include as appendices um, the RFP that you generated, Fred, for the affordable housing development grants, um, the ADU pilot um, write up and as well as rubric um, and just have a little bit more of that detailed background information available um, for the people who have in-depth questions. Good. On, I'm I'm intending to I'm intending to attend as well, but um, right. uh, I'd be happy for you to lead um, at that point. So great. Um, I, going back but to what the CPA said last fall, they uh, allocated, I believe it was $23,000 recommended to town uh, meeting, but wow. said that if there was additional funds that became available, they were open to voting uh, at, at their April meeting to increase the recommendation. The way the law works is they cannot change the recommendation at town meeting so they would have to do it um in their their upcoming meeting if there are funds available and i don't know that there are so the possibility is there could be a few dollars under the couch cushions that they they sh shed our way um while we're in this financial report section um i was i was meeting with chris rumble today around preparing for the cpc meeting and he mentioned that it would be helpful for him 
if we could give um, staff general guidance when it comes to spending um, on what, how to know which bucket to pull funding out of. And what I mean by that is we have, um, if you go to the second tab, Fred, the town sources and expenses, you can see here that um, we have general funds here in the, the red at the top, and then the next category is the CPC funds. So he, if we could give him a general guideline on should he be spending the general fund dollars down first to preserve our balance of CPC funds for property purchases, given it that um, um, CPA funds um, allow us to move more quickly on proper property acquisition? Yes, um, I think that this came up when we gave the grant to Front Street and we decided at that time, I think Bill, you, you had an opinion that we should be tapping into the town funds and reserving the CPA funds for any future uh, in uh, acquisitions. For those who, just to remind us, we have some special uh, exemptions if we use CPA funds, if we're buying property, exemptions from the procurement law. Uh, so it, it's to our advantage. So I think we can basically provide uh, staff that guidance that uh, we would prefer to use town funds. Unless we stipulate otherwise until they're exhausted. Although th there may be a case where like down payment assistance, we had some money set aside specifically by CPC for down payment assistance. So if there's right. something like that, sure That's we should true. have money first. Right, some of the, the earlier grants from CPC were restricted to certain programs. So, uh, it's okay though, Bill, because our balance on that is only six hundred and ninety-five now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I should scroll down here too to show you where we're at um, for 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 those uh, monies. Anyway, um, the other part is we have three thousand two hundred and ninety-one dollars and ninety-six cents in what was basically an unrestricted fund, which we've always sort of cared, uh, carried as a uh, administrative fund. It doesn't have to be, but uh, that original $15,000 grant from 2017, we've always kind of in the back of our minds thought of as administrative money. And that's where we uh, specified the grant writer. Uh, yeah money would come from would be the administrative money yeah. so, that we um, voted for previously. Just okay. to confirm with uh, Garfield, Joe and Christina, this are you all on board with um, me telling Chris, yes, as a general rule, start with non-CPA funds for things that aren't property acquisition unless we tell you otherwise. Yes. I, I'm fine with it. Yes. Sure. Sure. Great. All right, thank you. I will communicate that to Chris. Um, okay, uh, I think that sums up our financial situation in our CPA report. Um, moving on, on our agenda under old business, we have the next steps for ADU. Uh, I think Ananda has basically said, we're still waiting for town council. And Bill, you talked about some of the things last time. So um, I'm guessing there's not much new. No, I've been working on doing my taxes. So I haven't been spending <laughs> time on this, but I will be. I do have some information about uh, leasehold agreements and homeowners association agreements that I've been sort of going through. And I'll be bringing that probably to the next meeting. And okay, good. We'll keep it on the agenda. And Krisha I've also has some. I've been researching the uh, non-toxic materials and uh, 
bunch of different modular homes, companies that use non-toxic materials and they are located in our geographical area. Yeah. Um, I need to call them up because they don't say the prices, so I need to discuss that. But I need to talk to Bill before I talk to them because I really need to know what yeah. to talk about. So we'll Bill and Christina, up. can you get together and yeah. uh, uh, be at so. the May meeting or, or May or June yeah. to let, let us know mm -hmm. where, where we're at? Yeah. We'd like to be ahead question. of this instead of after. I have a question, if I may. Hmm. Yes, please. Okay. Um, I don't know if we're in the horse before in the cart or not, but maybe when we get money, is it possible to do, like we do town does sometimes, you put out a big blast to see, because I've, I've talked to Bill about it and I've seen it, and I think he's even seen it, where there are people doing uh, ADUs and building homes. Can we put out a, a, a flyer, if you will, or some kind of a national, to see if we can generate some cheap uh cheap industry cheap building if you will or a lesser cost when, when we have the money um i'm can you ask the question a different way i'm not sure i'm understanding like i am the publicity part so i i don't think this answers your question but in case it does for the actual for the ADU pilot, as soon as we know we can move forward with opening applications and have a deadline, a date for that, we have a plan in place to advertise that. Was that your question? Pretty much, yes. If we just do it on a wide range basis, if I've seen online a few places that are kind of progressive out west that are actually colleges or building ADUs and stuff so that's always been something that's in my mind that maybe there's someone out there that's um doing this cheaply or cheaper oh so, so you're you're wondering if there's somebody somewhere else that could do this more cheaply here yes uh, well this um well this is limited to the only people who can apply are um residents of great barrington so in that way it's limited but if they wanted to research and use a company from somewhere else that was cheap they could right that would be right that's what i meant a company that would do right exactly not so much the individual but the com a company that is building homes well one of the reasons for rolling it out this way is to work out some of the kinks but also to have a project that we can celebrate that we can put a publicity in the newspaper, write articles about it, take pictures of it, and get everybody excited about it. That That's really where I wanted to do was, to, you know, do one of these. It's a trial that we can then use that as a stepping stone for future, future work and say, wow, isn't this great? Look what Susie Hill did. And, you know, uh, how wonderful it is let us know what you think that sort of thing mm -hmm. so, going forward and i think also as we have programs that are successful and that we can articulate that success back to the community and members of the community can articulate this helped me that will increase the backing for our argument that the best system for Great Barrington would be for housing CPA funds to all go to the Affordable Housing Trust to be used over the course of a year rather than a single point in the year. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I think- Okay, um, on our agenda, uh, Bill, we we were carrying the cottage house development. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? No, there's nothing, nothing new to report at the moment. Okay. Uh, if you like, I'll carry it on the agenda going forward, and uh, or, or you can let me know when and when you you want me to add it. Let me know before the next meeting. Yes. Um, at our last uh, meeting, uh, Joseph brought us a letter about zoning considerations for mobile homes. And we voted at that time four to one to send the letter to the planning board. 
which has been done. And I have um, received a note from the chair of the planning board uh, asking for a little bit more information and asking for uh, a representative to come before the planning board on April 25th. That's a Thursday, a week from a week from Thursday. So Joseph is uh, going to come to the planning board. I will be there as well. Uh, but Joseph's going to lead the discussion um, uh, relative to the letter. Joseph, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, no, just uh, you were you you were uh, over email. Um, you were mentioning that the code, yeah, that just just that. I think I sort of uh, in my in my message, I kind of implied that that there's no difference in in the building code, um, but the mobile homes use ANSI one one nine one. Uh, one one nine point one uh, RVs and tiny homes use ANSI one one nine point five, uh, and but they are basically the same. Uh, it's just like uh, it's the smaller houses have slightly different like size requirements. But so basically, in other words, mobile homes have the same mobile homes have the same building code as as tiny homes. So for what for what that's worth, the planning board is interested in wanting to know what is behind your request and listening to your um, discussion about why this should be changed. Sure. So um, I, we can talk if you like. Uh, I will. Um, I'm planning. Well, actually, I was planning on attending that planning board anyway, so I'll be there. Um, um, but so when I was thinking about it, I was thinking that I think if I'm talking, then I my mandate is only to say what is in the letter and what is in the letter insofar as I'm speaking as a representative of the board and all the letter is saying I'm just asking questions. So I'm not I, I don't think that's going to fly in front of the planning board. Well, that's not that's like literally not what we voted for. So. Like Ananda doesn't want me to go there and argue for it because because that was condition of voting for it, right? Uh, Ananda well, wasn't at I the meeting. That, he was at the meeting where we. I was we, at the meeting where we voted that there would be a letter. Okay. Um, I th I think you know what I was really going after there, Joe, was that I don't think it's our purview to set that policy, mm -hmm. but I think they that board is best positioned to do that um i don't have any i i don't have any problem with you presenting here's what you know i think that we did talk about some overall concerns that would reflect the board as a whole and i think you're also a resident of great barrington and you the reason you brought those concerns to us came with research you've done so i think that sharing that I mean, to me, there are things that we talked about that make sense for why we're referring this to them, that um, we're in a housing crisis and we really need to look at every option available, that um, from our reading of the current zoning, it seems actually fairly arbitrary that if somebody could bring in a mobile home in two modular units, it would no longer be a problem. Um, and that we know that in some communities, the origin of this type of zoning is really about what kind of people are allowed in a community and what kind of people are being discouraged. And given all of those factors, please look at it. Yeah. I, I trust you to be able to say this is where this is as far as the board got. And here's some additional like here's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yes, that's that's what I was thinking is that I would just be very clear and say like, this is if the other, if other members of the board are also comfortable with that. But I can't really, I mean, I think we have to have ability to speak as residents. And... Yeah, but 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 I, but the point is that I'm not invited there to speak as a resident because yeah. I can just use citizen speak time there. Uh, so I'll just I'll just make clear to them and say, this is what the, the these are the board's concerns. Um, you know, just 
elaborate on them, but but stick to them. Uh, yeah. and, and and then say if you're interested, I can speak, you know, from my own perspective. But they and they might say I, they don't, they're not interested. That's fine. No, I I think you can speak as Ananda said. I think you can speak from your own perspective, and I think you should. Uh, I think that you know it does make sense for you to say what the board has has asked and what you believe is behind it. I think that it's up to you to flesh it out, flesh, to give a little bit more than is in the letter contents. They're going to ask you questions, and I think you have to have the ability to answer those questions. Uh, okay. So, all right. So that's on the twenty fifth. Uh, on the 30th is the CPA, so uh, we've got a busy uh, away time for that. Um, also on old business, next item is vacant house survey. Nothing's happened on that, so we're just going to move on. Um, unless anybody has any more comments on any of those issues. Hearing none, uh, we have an application for a down payment assistance loan um this is for uh yeah a young family who is buying a house uh on wyantic in Housatonic, uh which is near the um north plain road project um uh they've been trying to buy this house for a while um it, uh, I don't know a lot about it. Uh, our contact was from the, um, the mortgage broker from uh, Greylock Federal. They have qualified for federal home loan bank uh, money, and they're looking for a loan from the Affordable Housing Trust for $24,000. They are income qualified. The house is within our area. They have done their um, mandatory training program. Uh, and uh, I recommend that we award a $24,000 loan to uh, Fred Stevens and Anna White for the purchase of this house in Housatonic. I will say, I think even though we have a very limited amount of money, that this is the kind of money that we can use that actually impacts the market in a positive way that helps people who are um, uh, needy. I, I I don't know what term to use, but uh, who are income qualified to be able to get into a home uh, there. I believe the house was part of an estate uh, uh so it may uh have some uh updating that's that's necessary uh i'll make a motion that we approve the application a second any discussion uh i just uh add that we we move funds out of the budget line for the grants in order to uh, make this loan possible. Uh, I have only one question. Uh, what, uh, is this what they ask for? The, and I, I feel like giving them more, mo them more money because they really need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I can answer that. Um, our our regular, our, we can give a grant of up to $25,000, but it can only be up to 10% of the purchase price of the house. Oh, okay. It is not a grant. It is actually a loan that will be a lien on the property that will have to be repaid to uh, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund when they sell the property many, many, many years from now. Um, so this is the maximum that we are allowed to provide. And the rationale for that is that there are loan programs that you need a 10% down. So if people who have been living paycheck to paycheck, and I don't know that these people are, um, have not been able to save, but have a sufficient income 
and and uh, to pay a mortgage and uh, expenses, then this helps them to get into that house so that they can start to build some equity uh, with a 10% mortgage, 10% down mortgage. I do have one question, Fred. I'm assuming yes. that you have seen a couple of years of tax returns or something to verify the income qualify income qualification. Yes. Okay. Uh, so there's a motion made by Bill and seconded, uh, and uh, no other discussion. So this is a a motion to approve twenty four thousand dollar down payment assistance loan. Um, again, I'm going to go what looks on my screen. Uh, a vote yes is to approve the $24,000 loan. Bill Cook, how do you vote? Yes. Ananda? Yes. Yes. Garfield? Yes. Joseph? Yes. Christina? Yes. And I vote yes, too. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm sure this is going to be very helpful. Um, Fred, I just wanted to appreciate your correcting your language around needy. I do think that um, mm. and as an earlier discussion about like AMI, we really are talking about a very large part of the population um, of our economy are unable to afford housing in South County. And um, yeah, it's a tough spot we're yeah. in actually, and there's- uh, um, I, Again, I, I want to okay. say I don't know these, I don't know these people uh, at all. I don't know whether they're uh, what their personal situation is. I do think in general terms that this is a very effective program to help some people uh, who otherwise uh, might not have family resources or savings or things like that uh to get into a home so yeah. um i'm really thrilled yeah. that we've been able to do three of these in the last um few months uh mm -hmm. i had thought that there weren't any no longer were the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses but there's been a couple of them that have turned up that's exciting i'm very pleased that we've been able to do this it's really and exciting it and it then, like like you said, Fred, it means that this property, it's beyond um, this family, this property will remain as affordable housing. Mm. Well, not permanently. Not permanently, but. But, um, you know, take a, a, a house that might need a little bit of work. Uh, it means that that house is going to be, you know, brought up to the neighborhood, uh, perhaps. Maybe it needs paint. Maybe it needs a roof, whatever. And I don't know that this specific house has that issue. But it increases, you know, a new family coming in is going to have new energy uh, in, a, in a neighborhood. Uh, it's going to be a house that's, you know, on the tax rolls. It's, it's going to be a family that, you know, can build equity uh and um be a part of our community and we need families mm -hmm. we need you know this is a family of four in this particular case um, yeah this is a south county family that gets to stay in south county there yeah, you go really neat win-win you know and i think that those are the kinds of programs that 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 are very effective in terms of the dollars that we have um i uh, uh, reiterate that it is still a loan that you know, we've done now 10 of these, maybe. Uh, and um, some point, you know, people are going to decide that either for work or for the size of their family or for other personal reasons to move and sell in their house. And uh, that money will come back to us that we can put into a, a revolving fund. So anyway. It's a win-win. Um, that's all I have on the agenda for tonight. Uh, does any member want to speak? Any member have any uh, any um, comments? I have something to talk about. Um, can you? It, sometimes we. So if I have, if I have a if I have a member speak, and it's kind of like not directly related to something on the agenda today. Does that mean that like 
people aren't allowed to respond to it or like i'm basically ask like i'm not i'm not it's nothing that would get voted on it's like it's just like something that would be for conversation i think that's a pretty pretty difficult to answer your question without knowing a little bit more but uh <laughs> i'm not all that much of a stickler for it. I don't think anybody here is going to worry about it too much. Okay. Um, it, if it does get into more detail, we can put it on a future right. agenda. Yeah, it's just it's kind of a technical thing, and and if there's time, I, I wanted to kind of address it. So, can I get the share screen? Uh, for what reason? To to show the thing that I wanted to show. What thing uh -huh. is it? Uh, uh it's uh it's it's the bylaw language the bylaw language for what bylaw for the the town bylaws this is the question i was asking well, why don't we just talk generally during trustee speak and we can put this on a future agenda okay i i did actually send you an email before to, to put it on the agenda but um, i don't recall it, seeing it slipped, it slipped through i guess so uh Okay, well, well, without any visual reminders, uh, yeah, maybe we just talk about it another time. The The general point that I was going to make is that uh, it's germane to going to talk to CPA, and it, maybe it's sort of a legalistic thing that doesn't matter too much. But CPC views their, their role as, uh, in my opinion, CPC views their role as uh, looking at affordable housing trust and deciding whether our activities are worthy of funding. Okay. And I think that, that if you look at the chain of bylaws, that that is not how the law that is, that is carried over from the state is actually intended. Um, so the, in our, so the town of, of Great Barrington to enact affordable housing trust fund, um, basically uh, has ha, they the state of Massachusetts uh, created the ability for a municipality to create an, an affordable housing trust fund, and in that so then the language that we have in our in our town code is taken from the Massachusetts code language. And that language says that um, an affordable housing trust fund can receive money from the 44B, AKA Community Preservation Act funds. And that what they should do is prepare a report to give to the CPC at the end. In other words, it's like, uh, it's like you do something and then you tell CPC about what you did. Uh, and then if you look into the language for uh, the um, for the CPA, uh, the law that introduced a, the ability for towns to have affordable housing trust funds added to the CPA, amended the CPA to say that a town can allocate funds from the CPA to an AHTF. So in other words, the way that we do it is by convention. The, we have decided uh, uh, as a community to say that CPC gets the money and then they give it to H AHTF. But that is not how the law is written. So that that is my point. And I think it's, I agree, it's, it's somewhat of a moot point because we have gone down this road for so long and acted in this way. But if you look at the actual language, the language is treated as, uh, there's a fund and the town can choose to allocate some of that money to CPC and some of that money to AHTF. And then, and then, and then AHTF provides a report to CPC, which they include in their, in their general report. So that's, that's, that is my, so that's my member speak. Um, so I have, I have the receipts on all that, uh, but that's, like um, that's what I'm saying. I will just say that from a, I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV, but I do know that there's uh, from writing specifications and doing contracts that there's a big difference between can and shall, 
in in the law in terms of how it's used. Um, so you know we can get into this if you like. I would ask you why we would be doing this this and whether we honestly I'm not sure it's a battle that I would suggest to this committee that we be entering into. I think you know the old adage of pick your battles might apply. Uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to achieve other than a academic no, I, I, exercise I actually, in what the law says. Yeah, no, I, I actually agree with you. So that's why that's why I'm not like that's why I'm not that excited about putting it on the agenda or like using more more time with it. It's kind of more of like a commitment to truth or just acknowledging the injustice that I think is at, at play. Uh so oh. I As think, you said, some of the. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't mean to. Do uh, just, 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 just that. I think we have to do something. You know, we have to do certain things to get money from CPC. Okay. But I'm just kind of putting out on the record that I think that the okay. way we do it is not fair. Okay. Can I say that? As you said yourself, a lot of water's gone over the dam. We've. Um, gone down this road a little bit. Um, I will give Ananda credit that she laid the groundwork beginning last year for changing our relationship with the CPA committee. So all of the work that she's been hard at with a financial report that is part of what is reflected in the law that you quoted that is that we report back to the CPA committee is the format that we're doing that now. And that we have a, we recognize this issue and we have the general framework of a plan going forward uh, to improve the situation. Mm -hmm. we're, we basically want to improve the situation and, you know, work, with the CPA committee on townwide goals. We yeah. want to make the case that we are the we are the agency that can help them achieve the goals that they're charged with. Yeah. So I think that's I think so it's like we have to do certain things to get the money. And we have to do like and we have, and we have we just weren't doing a good job reporting and now we will be doing a good job reporting. I, I do have a concern that our, that we hold our, I, it's basically like, I think we should hold our boundary as much as we possibly can. That, that, that Then that's my real objection is that if the CPC thinks that their job is to do the job of the AHTF, then they should just subsume it, right? But, and it, so, so I, I think we need to get, I think we need to be clear that like, like, in the in the next cycle when we apply that they don't get a veto on every single little item that we have well i i don't think we can tell them what to do thank you for your comment though i think it's a very interesting discussion i do too um i do ananda i see a hand i see a hand I hand please go ahead i'm pointing you at my screen here over there okay. now um now I've forgotten, so we will just move on. Okay. Uh, I got distracted by the, that last part of that thought with uh, CPC. Well, I, I think basically we have a plan in place and, and we're going to move forward. And, um, uh, you know, it's a small town. Everybody is all well-meaning. Uh, I, I shouldn't say more. The CPA, I... I you know, let's not lose sight that the CPA gave five hundred and fifty thousand dollars to affordable housing this year, and That's good. I'm glad. So what you I wanted I to say for my trustee speak time was I wanted to go back to what you had brought up at the beginning of the meeting, Fred, and say town meeting is coming up before we meet again, and to the best of our ability, the more we are able to go to town meeting and participate in the the debate about affordable housing 
that's another avenue for us to advocate for. And that includes the very, I mean, in some ways, while we asked CPC, oh. give us the, the maximum allocation towards affordable housing, this is a crisis. We need to be looking at CPC funds as prioritized for housing. Um, while they didn't give it to us, they did allocate the very close to the maximum amount that they can they to affordable housing. And so um, I'm really, really pleased with that outcome. It's the best thing we can be doing for our community. And each of their each of the grants they're recommending to the town are going to be voted on by the town. And so that's an important place for you to show up to all members of the town who are able to attend that night to show up and vote. And we know that where town when members of the community have had concerns, it's meant that certain grants didn't pass. Um, and so that's just another layer of democracy. Right. Or I know, Joe, that you feel the town meetings don't really count as democracy, but it is a form of direct democracy. Um, yeah, um, thank yeah. you for that. I, I do think it's very important that we do support all of those grants, and whether they came to us or whether they went directly. Uh, you know, we have our issues. Community listening, go vote. Um, I have one, rent, uh, and that's rental assistance. Uh, I believe that uh, it, what it didn't get on the agenda, it probably should have, but um, I believe you had some discussions with Jane about revising the report. Uh, I would like to be involved in that if we could talk, um, you know, maybe make a little delegation to talk about how, what kind of report, what do we want to see on the report and how to, how to do a better job of that. Because as you were saying about the backup information that we need for all of those programs, I think that's one that we're a little thin on having backup information. I'm not sure that I can find in my files a document that describes the roles and responsibilities of the parties for the rental assistance program. And we should have something like that, even if it's a letter there and 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 concomitantly a report that um is more of more directed towards great barrington so anyway rental assistance we're going to put that on the agenda for going forward anyone else have any comments from the trustees uh i am i'm just going to say that i am not going to be supporting all the uh, projects that cpa is funding um because i don't agree with them like for example that thorn would think i'm definitely going to vote against and maybe even speaking against it so then maybe we can get that money back <laughs> well it's not our money but yeah um uh anyone else okay uh any citizens peter or michael anybody Eileen, do you have any comments from Media Speak time? Hearing none. Uh, 754, uh, good evening. Uh, let's see the next. Where is this? Shoot. Oh, I think I lost the. Here it is. Yeah, next meeting is May 21st uh, via Zoom. Uh, if you have any agenda items, any information that you'd like to share with the committee, please get them to me at least a week ahead of time. Uh, thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good, night. good night, all. Good night, all.